So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmadu wa usalli ala Rasul al-Kareem. Uh, we're here with Dr. Omar today. We're going to talk about a very important topic. And uh, before we do, Dr. Omar wants to make an announcement. Uh, so uh, please uh, pay attention. Yes, Dr. Omar. As Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very well, much yes, for uh, huh? in, in inviting me again. And uh, uh, may it please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant us his wisdom in this hour and also to grant uh, a boon to a man whom he has just um, uh, joined to me as a companion here in Kentucky. This fellow's name is Muhammad Ali, and uh, he's originally from Kentucky, was up in New York for a bit and decided to come visit me. And he's now uh, here living with us as a renter in our uh, basement apartment, and he's planning on staying here, but we need to find a wife for him. And um, to make it uh, uh, somewhat uh, appeasable uh, to uh, the dear ladies out there, we're talking about a permacultural uh, estate building uh, in, on five acres here in the middle of Kentucky. We're the only Muslims here. I mean, the closest Muslims are maybe an hour away in another city, and uh, we're surrounded by good Christians. So let me share the screen. I'll show you this good brother here. And um, you can see that uh, here he is. This is Muhammad Ali. He is 57 years old. He's been married, uh, divorced twice. He married uh, ladies from Morocco who came here looking for gold. They didn't find it with him. He's a simple uh, man. He's got a high school education, owns his own house in another city here in Kentucky, but has been assigned to me as my companion to help me here on the farm. And there you can see he's helping me. You see, I'm crippled. I do the best I can, but I can't lift those bays of hail. He lifts them up and throws them around like they're a baby. You see, so uh, this fellow is healthy and uh, he's looking for uh, a good Muslim who wants to live a simple life. We're far from the cities. We have decent neighbors, but we're pretty much living uh, the life that a lot of people talk about doing in this day and age, leaving the cities and reuniting ourselves with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through nature. And we're preparing ourselves for, I think, the dearth that is coming. So don't get any high-minded ideas here. He's assigned to me to help me in my work. And part of my work is what I'm doing here with uh, the good Sheikh Belash. And he's dedicated uh, to doing whatever is necessary to help me finish my task, <laughs> alhamdulillah. So we want to find someone who's going to complete his dean and that lady will have her dean in turn complemented and completed and we'll carry this work, our work together, my work individually, his work, your life's work individually, straight into the community as the perfect dean, the perfected dean, the completed dean, you see. And that's part of the topic that we're going to discuss today, which has to do with sex and marriage. Now, some of you don't want to discuss that, that's okay. But it's, it's important, it's very important, it's central to Islam. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, if you know anyone who might be interested in becoming this good man's wife, please write to me at oz at yahoo.com. That's o-z-a-i-d at yahoo.com. Now, Sheikh, let's get on with our work. Let's get on with our work, inshallah, bismillah. You know, uh, we are going to, inshallah, talk about intimacy today. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to share different parts of the Quran, different sayings of the Prophet, and I want your expertise. You're writing a book on it, so everyone should purchase that book when it's published. Or I think inshallah. it's published. Yeah, and then, uh, so to begin with, uh, let me share uh, a portion of the Quran. Uh, so, in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 185, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. In this conversation where Allah is telling us about the month of Ramadan and how to fast and the importance of fasting and what are the, uh, you can say, the, uh, the licenses to not fast if you're traveling. And then right after Ramadan, in the most important spiritual month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْلَةُ الصِّيَامِ رَفَثَ إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ Permitted to you is, is intimacy with your wives on the night of the fast. So out of all the places Allah could have chosen to talk about intimacy, Allah chose the month of Ramadan. And it's in a, actually in the form of a command, like you have to be with your wife in the month of Ramadan. So I want to ask you, Dr. Umar, this is my first question. Uh, of course, intimacy is important. Sexual attraction is important. But if you could say some words about that, and then some thoughts about the relationship between spirituality, the most spiritual month, and here Quran is saying, don't forget to have intimacy with your wife, even in the most spiritual month. Because, you know, a lot of us, I mean, where I'm from, and where a lot of people are from, you know, Ramadan's a month you get busy. I mean, you, you don't think about your wives, you know, you just focus on fasting, focus on Allah, focus on prayers. And here Allah is saying, no, 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 you know, it's important to go to your wives. The only time you're not to go to your wives is when you're actually in the masjid staying for a long period of time. So please, some wise words on this and reflecting on this. Oh, dear. Um... Well, I am just in the process of finishing up uh, the final phases of uh, this book, which I've entitled Sexology for the Wise. Um, and let me just tell you why I chose that title, because the fear of Allah is the beginning of wisdom, you mm -hmm. see. So I've entitled the book Sexology for the Wise, which means it's not for other people. It's not for people who do not fear Allah, okay? Mm. They're forgotten, okay? These are what the Christians call reprobate. But those who fear Allah had better pay attention to what uh, the prophet uh, related to us and Allah related to us in this particular portion of the Quran because it is central to our salat, it is central to our, you know, don't think of Salat as just a, a ritual prayer, because it's far more than that. Salat means an ongoing connection. Mm. And you, you know, if you, you think about, the, I've said this before in other lectures, the, the Salat, the, the ritual prayer is like dropping a dime in the old phones. Mm. You see, the old public phones, you put a coin in and then you make the connection. Mm. But Salat is actually an ongoing connection. You never hang up. Mm. And as this passage just says, hey, I answer <laughs> my servant when he calls me. Mm. Okay, So the Salat is a constant estate of calling. It's a constant conversation. It's a constant connection. Now, intimacy with your wife is a reflection of that connection. You see, it's what the Christian. Oh, you connected call... the verse right before it with this. Yes. Okay. Yes, just so the is. audience can see what you did. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just so the Let's audience see. can see what you did. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Shay. So, because I think that's pretty cool, actually. Okay. The yeah. ayah number 186 talks about connection with Allah. And after describing everything in Ramadan, Allah says, well, this should be the end point, right? <laughs> when my servant asks you about me, I'm very near you, right? <laughs> I answer the call of the caller when he makes dua to me. <laughs> so also respond to me while you mean will be and do believe in me. <laughs> so they will be guided. So this is connection with Allah. And now yeah. here in the words that how you took it, in ayah yes. number 187, Allah is saying about the same month, that yes. it's talking about the connection with the wife. Yes, of course. If there, there, you can't separate 
the connection with Allah from the connection with the wife. You see, from the connection with your spouse, not just the, with the wife, but the wife with the husband, you mm -hmm. see. And if it's just sex, that's not the connection that we're after here, mm -hmm. you see. I mean, if you're just asking Allah, you know, for a favor, that's not the connection, you know. He might just say, okay, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let the jinn answer that favor. Mm. <laughs> See, you know, say, I'm not interested in that kind of, in, in, I want intimacy. Mm. I want you to know me. I want knowledge. Mm. I want you to experience my guidance. That's mm. what that verse is about. Mm. So let him answer me, mm. but let him ask me. I will answer him and then let him answer me. Mm. It's a conversation. It's a back and forth. It's a back and forth. It never stops. And that's what we have with our spouses, you see. Mm. Allah designed the whole affair in order to, when I say affair, I'm talking about marriage. He designed marriage so that it will reflect our relationship with him. Mm. Because it, this intimacy never stops. And when it does stop, you got a divorce. And what does that mean? It means you got a divorce from Allah as well because the guidance isn't there, you mm. see? Now, it's Allah hates divorce, but he doesn't mind the divorce if, if, you know, if, the, if the marriage is misguided, okay? Let's just say you have a forced marriage. Mm. Well, that's not guided at all. If mm. you're going to force somebody to marry someone they don't want to marry, that's mm. not guidance, mm. no. Because there is no force in Islam. There's no force in religion, you mm. see. So the people who are doing this, they're, they're way off, way off center, you see. Mm. They're misguided and they're misguiding other people. They're causing them to mis be misguided because mm. the deen cannot be completed then. And mm. what is the deen? The deen is to fulfill guidance within the marriage because that's half the deen, mm. you see. You can't complete the deen unless you have the marriage. Mm. So if you're going to misguide people from the get-go, they can't get on the deen. Mm. And that, uh, what does that lead you? That leads you to what we were just discussing before we started this little uh, video chat, and that has to do with fitna. Mm. Oh, this is not guidance. Mm. Fitna is interference. There's no connection. There's no call. There's no communion. There's no... Uh, collective uh, intimacy. There's no knowledge. There's no knowing of the other, mm. you see. And knowing of the other is supposed to represent your knowing of Allah, mm. you see. Well, you know, it's like Ghazali said to the student. Student, wanted to, said, student came to him and said, I want to be your student. And he said, where's your wife? Mm. In other words, you have to have a wife before you become the caller of Allah. Mm. You know, Allah's going to say, okay, you're, you're, you're not married yet. Don't, don't worry, all you unmarried people out there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't get upset now with me. Allah's going to answer you up to a certain point. It's like, you know, it's like the, it's, it's like the kid who wants the car from his dad. Give me the keys, dad. And, uh, dad, and dad says, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. And Ghazali said to the student, you want to be my student? You want to be my student? He said, where's your wife? That's they, kind of like you know, when we say uh, not... <laughs> in, in, in traditional Islam, in traditional yeah. Orthodox, Orthodox, you know, they would say, because the modern world is almost like get a job and then wife, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In, in yeah. Orthodox, they'd be like, if you get a wife, you'll get a job. It was like the opposite. No, no. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> well, it might happen, but that way it can happen that way. But you know, for example, I'll just I'll just tell you this one. This for uh, for example, with uh, Brother Muhammad Ali, who's just joined me here. Mm. He came to us last month. We had an interview. We had an, a lovely uh, two or three day visit. Then he had to go back. And while he was uh, here, we decided yes, Allah is joining us together. So he decided he went back to New York. He closed down all his operations, quit his job, and he came here. And in the meantime, a fellow came to my house and uh, we had some conversation and some things to do. And uh, I asked him, by the way, I have a gentleman coming here. Uh, could you use him on your team? You know, could you, could you give him a job? And uh, he said, sure. <laughs> hmm. So this guy, leaves everything in New York to follow Allah's guidance. He comes here. He's been here three or four days and he's already got a job. He hasn't even looked for it. 
Well, you understand? Okay. Now, this is guidance, okay? Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to find a wife for him. So, wow, does that make me his Wali or his Sheikh or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I've been telling you before that this is how Allah's been working with me personally for years now, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And now he's extending that grace to this good gentleman. And I'm asking your people uh, to extend the grace of a good wife to this man. Mm. Now, this is a form this is a form of prayer. This is a form of dawah. I'm yeah, making an inquiry right. from the people of who say that they belong to Allah, you see. Mm. Now, let's find out if there's somebody out there who really does belong to Allah, you mm. see. You understand? Yeah. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about communication. Mm. I'm expecting an answer, whether it comes from your people, uh, your listeners, our listeners now, or whether it comes from someplace else. I don't much mind. I'm expecting Allah to bring a wife for this good man. Mm. Okay. So um, this is an ongoing communication. And the center of this communication has everything to do with the know knowledge, the intimacy that is shared in marriage. It's a reflection of it. A reflection okay. of that intimacy. Yes. That's what it is. And when you have this reflection of intimacy, there's a constant state of expectation. Expectation for what? More conversation. Why? Because life is ever evolving. Life is ever in uh, motion. It's always dynamic. Our relationship with Allah is dynamic. Guidance is dynamic. It's not static. Mm. Muslims are stuck stuck in this in, in place of uh, static. They, mm. you know, they go to their ritual. They come back. They go to their ritual. They come back. They go to their ritual, and there's nothing in between. There's no dynamic. Mm. You see, the, and that's going back to this verse. He calls me, I answer, and I expect him to call me back and mm -hmm. to respond. This is the same that happens with your wife. You call her, she answers, you mingle, and then you expect this dynamic to go on. It doesn't stop. When it stops, that's a kind of a death. So, so that means sex is very important. In of course sense. it is. Yes, yes, it is. Now, if if I may, if I may yeah, say, just as a reflection, you know, when we study the companions of the Prophet, one of the things that's taught to us is that they were many of them were very keen on sex. Like even one of the companions, I don't remember the name, like said that if I was to die tomorrow, I'd still want to be with my wife, even on the last day of, of, yes, my, yes. of my life. And yes. then, uh, you know, companions of the Prophet would be like very like... Uh, uh, like, how do I put it? Like, some of, like, Omar bin Khattab, one, uh, I think it was about him that, uh, you know, he was always feeling the urge. Ali mm -hmm. one, was always feeling the out urge of mm -hmm. you know, doing it. And uh, so, like, for example, w one day, uh, Ali was one of the people given exception to be allowed in the masjid, even though you've, like, uh, like ejaculated, because he, that would happen to him even when he's not with his wife and he'd have the earth. Mm -hmm. And so he was allowed, yes. the prophet said, you're allowed, he gave him an exception. You're allowed uh, to be in the masjid, even though mm -hmm. you're, you're not, uh, you know, you have yes. Wilson. And so, and Omar, same thing. Ali radiallahu one, just as an example, got mad at his wife, the daughter of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when she would be very like decently dressed, which is mm -hmm. a whole conversation we can have in itself. Because I think that sometimes when sisters start wearing hijab and niqab, they become less, um, uh, a lot of times less uh, interested in like beautifying mm -hmm. themselves compared yes. to the women that are out there, like kind of like. Yes, yes. So anyway. Well, it can happen, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so, you know, Ali was upset that because he's in Umrah in a state of ihram and mm -hmm. he can't have intimacy and his wife is like, like they would be big on this and i don't know if it's our food our environment or what but it seems like when you look at the data people are less and less interested in having intimacy with their wives and 
Well, I can tell you, certainly people I counsel, it's not, you know, for as much as that you have this whole society that's on this kind of like sexual revolution, people don't mm-hmm. really have that much intimacy as it's like. Well, there's, there's a number of reasons for that, but let's not mix the topics here. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go back to this uh, urge business. Okay. Now, there's a difference between intimacy and there's a difference between uh, a sexual need. Okay. Mm. Now you want right, to right, have right, right. You, you want to have the sexual need and the intimacy to be congruent, mm. uh, to be together, so that they it, it flows dynamically together. Mm. But it, that's not always the case. Uh, there are certain men, and let me make this perfectly clear. Okay, there are certain men who have more of the urge than others, and this is a hormonal. Uh, business also a thing of health. Some people are just healthier than others. Some men are more virile, uh, not just necessarily more manly, but they have higher degrees, higher levels of testosterone. And what you're describing towards the end of your little uh, uh, interjection there was the lower lowering of the testosterone levels and that's a flex that's the result of many toxic uh, influences in the food in the in the environment in the medications that people are taking okay not to mention the psychological profiles that uh, and the psychological uh, stresses that are taken when you're under stress you're not interested in sex mm. and uh, some some people are to the opposite, though, when they're stressed, they just want more set. Why? Because they want to feel better. So they they want the, the orgasm can become then like a drug and they become a drug addict. Only they're uh, addicted to their own internal forms of uh, morphine, mm. uh, which makes them feel good. But it's only temporary, you see. Mm. So this thing has several aspects to it. But let's get back to the what they call what people like to say, oh, the hypersex male. He's not hypersex. He just has a higher uh, testosterone level. And for whatever reason, Allah gave him a higher testosterone level. Now, some of these men, they're your very valiant warriors, Mm. you see. And, you know, I've told you before in other conversations that uh, these guys will wear a woman out in two or three weeks. You know, some of them need to have sex uh, three or four times a day. Hmm. That's just the way of it. So they need another wife. Okay. And by with their wife's permission is best. Okay. And so the wife, uh, the wives, or the wife or the wives of such a man, they need to understand this. They're not rejecting you. You see, <laughs> they, they just have to have, they've got a stronger sexual drive. Some men don't have such a drive. And the same, the same, it's vice versa for some women, okay? And it's a hormonal thing. Now, it can become a psychological obsession as well. And that has to do with a poor personality and with ide- a, an identity crisis, which has to do with the lack of guidance, the lack of relationship with Allah. And, and when you lack a relationship with Allah, you're also lacking a relationship with other people, which means that you're have, not having your purpose fulfilled, you're not being identified, your gifts are not being used, and you don't feel fulfilled. So all of these things have to be measured uh, one way or another when we're talking about the sexual relationship between husband and wife. Mm. You see, so it's it's, it's not a simple, straightforward dynamic. But I'll tell you this, when it's right, when the marriage is good and when it is guided, it is easy. It just flows. Mm. Not that you don't have a bad day or two. That always happens to all of us because we're human. But mm. it's not as problematic. So the, the thing about it is that the sexual need is a form of mating the lock with the key. Mm. But this lock with the key is not simply the, um, the sexual intercourse itself. It goes right down to the subatomic level, which then enters into the interdimensional uh, other universes.